Hello and welcome. Today we're going to take a look at aerobic respiration in plants, yeast and animals and also a look at anaerobic respiration as well. We're going to start off with aerobic respiration in plants, yeast and animals. Remember this is aerobic respiration so this requires oxygen or uses oxygen. Um, there is a previous video to this, so if you're not quite sure about the idea of respiration, you can go and watch that. However, for now, we've got aerobic respiration in plants, yeast and animals. We're going to start off by looking at yeast. Okay, so what we've got to help us understand this idea is we've got this little container. This is called a conical flask. And in that container, we have a solution with yeast. So we've got yeast and sugar solution sugar solution sugar solution is basically just sugar dissolved in water and that acts as a food source to help the yeast however this doesn't quite help us understand what yeast is so if we were to magnify that little area there make it a lot bigger we could see that the yeast cells might look a little something like that. Now that still is a little bit small. So let's make that bigger still. And there we go. We can see our solution in this kind of uh, yellowy color. And then the yeast cells there in that solution. So let's put that back to its normal size. So we can see that yeast is actually a microorganism. Now, we can look at this idea of aerobic respiration in yeast, but actually because it's the same in plants, and in animals, and remember we're including humans as animals, because it's the same in all of these three types of living thing, we can summarize the process of aerobic respiration in a summary word equation, and that goes a little bit like this. We have glucose, and because it's aerobic respiration, that's with oxygen, we have plus oxygen, and then we use an arrow, remember not to say equals, we have an arrow and that gives us carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide plus water, carbon dioxide plus water. And this process is the same for whether we're talking about plants, yeast and animals. If we're talking about aerobic respiration, we're going to use the same summary equation to describe what's going on. Remember also sometimes we have an energy that we write here. We don't include that as part of the equation because actually energy is released. It's not a physical substance involved in this process. So sometimes we write and energy uh, nearby but somewhere else not in the equation. So that's aerobic respiration. Now what about if we have anaerob anaerobic respiration? And we're just going to look at anaerobic respiration in plants and in yeast. We're not going to look at it in animals because we did that in the previous video. So here we have a setup similar to before but this time we've got our yeast and yeast solution in our conical flask but now we have a kind of lid on there. This is called a bung made of rubber and it just stops any air getting in. So that means if air can't get in, that means oxygen cannot get in either. Sometimes in this experiment we will have a layer of oil over the solution and that oil stops any air from reaching the yeast but it also allows any gas that's produced to come out. Now on top of everything else we have our bung, but also we have a glass tube that allows any air to leave this conical flask. Any gas to leave. Now the gas that's actually produced is carbon dioxide and that will come off in the, through the tube. It will come out through the tube and go into this solution here. And this solution is lime water. We sometimes use this to test for carbon dioxide, something called lime water. And what we get is bubbles of carbon dioxide coming through there. And if that gas is carbon dioxide, the lime water will go cloudy. So that's the reason for this piece of equipment here. Okay, so this is how we set up anaerobic respiration in yeast. 
that's anaerobic respiration in yeast. We can also have anaerobic respiration in plants. Now this doesn't happen all the time, but it occasionally happens in the roots when they have too much water in the soil. The soil can become waterlogged. That means not enough oxygen can get to the roots and they cannot respire aerobically. So then they begin to respire anaerobically without oxygen in order to provide energy. Now, there is also a summary word equation we can use here. And it's the same for both yeast and plants. So it goes like this. We have glucose. Remember, we have no oxygen, so we don't add oxygen here. We have an arrow, and that gives us a substance called ethanol. This might be a new key word for you, but gives us ethanol and some carbon dioxide. Will that fit in? Should do carbon dioxide as a gas. So this is anaerobic respiration in plants and in yeast and a little demo of how this can be set up with yeast. So what we can do now is just have a little look at a summary of everything we've just talked about over the last couple of slides. So we've got this idea of respiration and we can break that down into aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. Remember aerobic means with oxygen and anaerobic means without oxygen. If we were to look at aerobic respiration, we can see that if we look at plants or animals or even yeast cells, we can see that the summary word equation is the same for all of those. Glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water and actually we might just write and energy here to show that this releases energy for the cells of these organisms to use. In terms of our anaerobic respiration, it's slightly different in that for animals, uh, remember humans are included as animals, and we looked at this in the previous video, the summary word equation is glucose goes to lactic acid, glucose goes to lactic acid. We do have some energy here, but a lot less energy than aerobic respiration. But this is our summary word equation here. And then we have anaerobic respiration in plants and in yeast. And that equation goes a bit more like this that we've just looked at. Glucose, and because it's anaerobic, remember no oxygen, gives us ethanol and carbon dioxide. So this is uh, quite an important uh, summary here, the differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration and the kinds of organisms that carry out the processes and what the summary word equations are. So this would be a really useful slide to test yourself on or get a friend or a parent uh, to test you on what the products are and the types of respiration in different living things. Um, and that's going to be really helpful for understanding respiration. However, that's it for our video for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.